just reading. What's happening with you? To the movies? Well, I don't know. What are you going to see? Maria who? An Ospenskaya Film Festival. No, I don't think so, Walter. Oh, besides, my favorite program's coming on, and I don't want to miss it. Well, look, Walter, why don't I give you a call back later if I'm still hanging around, okay? Walter, well, Walter, look, I have to go. I think my cat knocked over one of my flower pots. Yes, Walter. Yeah. Bye. I can give you something closer, but with the cold temperatures, it makes all the usual tests unreliable. It wasn't cold last night. It wasn't here. Did this tore the closet door off the hinges. Oh, 
Lou, the pressure is on to find this guy. I'm counting on you to bring him in. Soon. I've got the mayor, the commissioner, and the press on my back. And Lou, shit rolls downhill. You read me? What do you want me to do? Go out and arrest a bum to get him off your back? You know what I mean. Look, Chief, I told you we don't have a clue. We have no witnesses, no prints, no nothing. Look, Chief, if you want to catch this guy, let's bring Ted Lonergan in on the case. Forget it, Capel. I'm already dealing with one maniac. I don't need another one. He's the best and you know it. I don't know it. The police department is doing very nicely without him. Lou, I don't give a damn how you solve this case. But if you bring any embarrassment to the department, say help me, I'll fry your ass. You got that? Yeah, I got it, Chief. And no Lonergan. Asshole. We have an agreement. You deliver five books per year. I deliver in five books. Five different books, not the same story over and over again. What do you want? Blood, Victor? Why don't you bite right here? That way the marks won't show. Oh, that's very funny, Ted. It's very funny, but it won't be so funny when I stop the checks. Victor, you're an idiot. And I can prove it. You know why you're not going to stop the checks? Huh? <laughs> you know why? Because those tired old plots are the same ones that gave you that home in Bel Air and that Rolls Cornish sitting in your driveway. So lighten up. You know, you guys kill me. Every writer thinks that this is the great American novel, but you know what it is, Ted? You know what it really is? It's garbage. I can listen to you all day. And you're right, it is garbage. You buy it. <laughs> contract or no contract. You better shape up or I'll pull the rug right off of <laughs> You gotta look where you're going. You hit me. What? I said you hit me. I did? <sighs> oh, yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, well, did you ever think about uh, maybe getting a smaller car? I mean, uh, this thing's a, like a bulk cruiser, you know? Kind of hard to miss, like a tank. I like this car. And I especially like this car without any dents. Yeah, it probably would look better without dents, yeah. Oh, look what you've done. Oh, gee, I hit the rear quarter panel there. I bet it's really hard to find parts for this car, you know? Especially that little chrome strip, that's gonna be tough to find. You jerk. You know, this car has been in my family for years without any accidents. You know, it's never gonna be the same. And you didn't even look. You just threw your car into gear and smashed into me. How the hell did you ever get a license? Would you like some atomic rocks? What? Atomic rocks, would you like some? You know, I think you're crazy. Juicy fruit? Maybe I, I got a stick of juicy fruit here somewhere. I'm gonna call the police. Oh, miss, a uh, miss, miss. Yeah. You forgot something. Thanks. Hey, look, I'm sorry I hit your car. I, I understand why you're upset. Here, let me let me give you my card, okay? Do you have a, a pen? Something like that? Here's my, my phone number and my, and my, uh, my address, but you'll need my uh, driver's license number. So you just come by my office anytime, and uh, I'll give you a check for the damages, okay? And it was really nice meeting you, and I am sorry that I hit your car. Wait a minute. You're not leaving, are you? Well, yeah, I've got to, I've got to go back no, to my No, you office. can't leave. I've got to call the police and report this. Oh, okay. All right, I tell you what. The number is 555-9000. That guy by the name of Chuck will answer the phone. He's really a nice guy. And you just tell him what happened, and they'll send a squad by, okay? No, no, you've got to stay here. Oh. <laughs> no, I can't. Um... Have some atomic rocks. Uh, what, what? What's your name? Um, it's Jennifer Stanton. Well, uh, I'll see you soon, Jenny.
that move for two days. Hey, you want to play chess or you want to argue? Just... That's your move? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? What do you mean? You just threw away your queen. <laughs> hey, I got a plan. Yeah, right, you got a plan. You threw away your queen and you got a plan. You're crazy, do you know that? By the way, uh, how's the asshole? You mean Warren? You know, who else? Well, he's doing the same thing we're all doing. They're trying to find some psycho who's running around trashing people. Yeah, I read about that in the paper. Uh, got any clues? No, nothing that makes any sense. Say, Ted, why don't you come down to the office and look at some uh, of the files? No, Lou, no. Ted, I think you ought to give this thing a chance. Yeah, you know, you're the best I've ever seen at this kind of stuff. I told you a long time ago I am through with investigation. And don't go talking to Warren, because I don't want anything to do with him. You sound like a 34-year-old has-been to me. Yeah, well, maybe I am, but I don't need any of your goddamn social work. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Me too. And by the way, check. Yeah. Uh, is this Mr. Lonergan's office? Oh, yeah, hi, come on in. Yeah, well, I think I hear Captain Video calling me on the optical scalometer. Oh, you don't have to go. I just wanted to talk to Mr. Lonergan about my car. You're the crazy... I mean, the lady with the jag? Well, I know I've got to go now. See you later, Ted. Yeah, bye, Lou. My maid's coming in next week. Mr. Lonergan, I, um, I hate to be blunt, but... You want me to pay, uh, for the damage to your car? It will cost at least $1,200 to repair my car, and I think you will admit that it was your fault. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Miss Stanton, I can't give you a check. <sighs> I thought so. All I have is cash. It's a little, uh, quirk of mine. I don't trust bankers. There's over $2,000 in here. Yeah, well, that's in case you have trouble uh, finding parts. No. Oh, which reminds me, here's the name of a guy who can uh, find parts if you need him. His name is Hewitt. Uh, he's Scottish. That was a Mark 9 Chag, right? Yes. Look, um, I am sorry that I hit your car. I know. Sometimes people can become attached to something like that. Well, it's just that it does have a, a certain sentimental value. Excuse me for saying this, but um, this is really not the reaction I expected to get. After this morning, I thought I'd be dealing with a real mental case. <laughs> well, I'm in contact with Earth occasionally. But uh, don't be fooled by this calm exterior. It's just a clever disguise. Actually, I'm uh, Errol Flynn. Well, <clears throat> Errol, it was nice meeting you. Yeah. Well, gee, maybe we'll run into each other again. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bob. Sorry about that. Um, look, look, why don't you let me take you out to dinner? Kind of make it up to you. Oh, I don't think so. Besides, you've already made it up to me. Thanks again, Mr. Lonergan. No, Ted. Ted. Okay. Ted. <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Bye, Ted. <laughs> wow. I can walk from here, I think. <laughs> Listen, I'll call you guys tomorrow if I'm still alive. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks.
in Sherman Oaks, a college co-ed, 22-year-old Janie Richter became victim number 11 in a series of brutal slayings over the past few weeks. The coroner's office issued a report this morning that Miss Richter's body had been found beaten. Apparently, her neck had been broken and her left leg ripped from her body. Los Angeles Police Chief Dennis Warren stated today that the killer will be caught and that the police department is working around the clock to bring the killer to justice. Informed sources say, however, that the police department has no real clues, and such statements by Chief Warren are wishful thinking. This is Alex Waverly in Sherman Oaks for KJ.
Jennifer. I hope this is the right color. Changed my mind. A woman's prerogative. Will you have dinner? It's on me. Eight ish? I'll pick you up here. Ted? Hello. Hi, it's Jennifer. Oh, hi. Come on in. I'll be on the second. Okay. Ow! <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Just hold on a second. found this great restaurant in Century City. They have their own wine cellar and the food is fantastic. Hi. <clears throat> um. Tell you what, why don't we have dinner at my place? I, um, I have some steaks and it'll be quiet and we can talk and uh, <clears throat> you won't have to dress up. Yeah, sure, great. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> okay. Dinner jacket here. <laughs> did, uh, did you have to look in Betty Crocker? <laughs> No, actually, it's a very basic, basic, mm -hmm. easy to... Uh... It was very good. Thank I enjoyed you. it very much. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm uh, feeling a little bit of the wine. <laughs> good. Would you like some more? Mm hmm Yes, I would. How about some music? Mm 
Any requests? Ravel's Bolero. What? Never mind. Isn't this um, the part of the evening that you say, so Miss Stanton, tell me a little bit about yourself. I don't have to. I know everything. <laughs> you were born September 20th, 1950 in Boston, Massachusetts. You had a very happy childhood. Uh, you graduated from Radcliffe uh, with a 3.6 in economics. <laughs> Your father owned a tool and dye company. Your parents were killed in an automobile accident in 1975. Shall I go on? No, that's all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's an old habit. That's all right. You are a detective. I was. I was a detective. But not anymore. Let me ask you a question. What? Why'd you decide to go out with me tonight? Or whatever it is we're doing here. Oh, kind of cute. And, um, you do have a way about you. Uh, don't mistake being comatose for style. <laughs> what are you having your cheek there? Oh, don't touch it, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Come here. Come here. Anytime something goes wrong in the middle of the night, the soup always says, Call Tinder! Yeah, sure. You won't mind getting up at three in the morning to bend pipes and wade in crap. Call Tinder! Maybe he just likes your smile. Mm. <laughs> you know what I was doing when he called, don't you? Valerie? you out of school. Spare me. Come on.
Hey, did you hear something? Hey, like what, Ralphie boy? I'm serious. Hey, you know, there's something down here. Hey, maybe it's Valerie come back for more. <laughs> Ted. Hi, Lou. What brings you here? Just in the area. Wow, what happened here? Hi. Ted, where do you want these? Jennifer, this is Lou Capel. You met him before. <laughs> the crazy, crazy lady, lady with, with the, the jack. jack. <laughs> Lou's an old friend. He's with the police force. Oh, um, well, I'll let you two play cops and robbers if you like. Um, I just want to know where to file these and I'll go back and finish. See, so file this one under Ackerman F and the other one in that big green file under O'Quinn K. Okay. Bye-bye, Lou. It was nice seeing you. Well, it's my pleasure. It's a very nice lady. Yeah. What are you doing here? You know, it's been a long time since you've been down to the office. I thought I'd come by and let you know what's happening. About those murder cases, right? Yeah. Lou. Look, wait a minute. Before you start to get upset, would you hear me out for once, please? Please hear me out. Ted, you and I have worked together on some offbeat cases. This is the strangest case I've ever been on in my life. Look, people in this town are dying like flies. And I don't know what you've read in the newspapers, but there's some psycho running loose in L.A. and he's killing people at random. There's always a pattern. Yeah, not to this one, there's not. Whoever this guy is, he's stronger and more cunning than anybody we've ever been up against. He pulled a door completely off the car of his last oh, week. Oh, come on. Listen, if you don't believe me, I'll take you down to the office and show you the car. Ted, I'm fine blind on this thing. The only thing I got going for me is Kathy Sperry, his latest victim. She's still alive, but she's in a coma. And there's a chance she may come out of it, but if she doesn't... Ted, I've talked to the chief and he said I can bring you in. No. I can't give you anything you want. Look, I appreciate what you are trying to do for me. 
but I don't want any half-assed therapy. Look, I'm not here because I think you are some charity case. I'm here because people out there need you, and I need your help. Ted, look, you're my best shot. I am sorry. I am not ready for that yet. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, too. Seems like I've been hearing that a lot around here lately. Hey, we can still skate if it gets dark. They do turn on the lights at night. Don't worry, Kelly. It's not going to get dark for a few hours yet. I'm going to go take a run. Come on back right away, okay? I'll have this fixed in a minute and we can go for a run. Together. She'll be back in a minute. It, it, she probably went all the way to the bottom.
Try and yeah, I did. Come on, let's go. Let's go! Wait a minute, I'm not going. Hey, don't leave me!
Well, I thought I'd go over and see him in person, Chief. Who is that? What the hell is he doing here? Ted. What the hell does he think he's doing? Listen, if you've had anything to do with this, so have I told Warren, you. how you doing? Looks like somebody interrupted your uh, dinner party. Well, I'm I wondered if you'd be sober long enough to stick your nose into this. My, my, aren't we hostile. Talk is, is that you need all the help you can get. But then again, you never were able to find your own ass with both hands. Get him out of here. Get him out of here before I kick his tail into the slammer and throw away the key. Get him out! That's just fine. That's just fine. What the hell do you think you're doing? I've been working on him for two weeks. I almost had him convinced. He's an asshole. I know that! But you know, you don't have one ounce of diplomacy in your body, Ted. Look, Ted, I consider you a friend. And I would appreciate it if you would go over and apologize. Ted? Um, I'm gonna go meet that girl over there. She, um, says she has some information and she doesn't want to talk to the police. Okay? Okay? Hmm? You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, goodbye. I'm sorry. I just can't deal with that guy. I know. Well, anyway, he's gone. Have you seen the body? No, no, not really. Come, it's over here. Sherry? Sherry? Sherry Carpenter! Come on, Jennifer, it's all right.
Jennifer? Ted, it's Lou. Oh, hi, Lou. What's up? It's Jennifer Ted. She's in the hospital in deep coma. Ted, are you there? What? What? What happened? They're not sure. The doctors think it's a brain tumor. She was at a place called the Aberdeen Research Facility. She apparently went into convulsions and into a coma. The young girl who works there found her. Where is she? At Central. see Miss Stanton if I could. You know Miss Stanton? Yeah. We've been trying to get in touch with her relatives. Well, I don't think she has any. Um, can I go in and see her? No, I can't let you go in there right now. Besides, she wouldn't even know you were there. Oh, well, what the hell happened? Is she going to be all right? Well, we don't know a lot about what happened, but apparently she went into a form of epileptic convulsions and then into a uh, comatose condition. I'm afraid she's slowly slipping into a profound state. Oh, what does that mean? Well, next 24 hours will tell, but you have to know her chances aren't good. Sorry. Uh, listen, could you come downstairs to admissions? We need to... Ted, Ted, it's Lou. Come on, get yourself together. What are you doing? You can't go on like this. Yeah, right. Come on. No, Ted, you've had enough of that. Stuff's gonna kill you. I don't care, I need a drink. Do you think that Jennifer would want you to act like this? Excuse me, are you Mr. Lonergan? Uh, yeah, I'm Lonergan. You look familiar. My name is Sherry Carpenter, and I would like... You were, uh... You talked to Jennifer, right? Well, yes. You were going to meet her somewhere. I, my car was heated, and I couldn't... Nothing. I didn't do anything. All right, haven't you done enough damage already? Get out of my office. Ted, Would you just get the hell out of here? Easy. Look, she didn't have anything to do with it. Jennifer had a brain tumor. Ted, you got to stop doing this to yourself. That's what I came to talk to you about. I do not think she has a brain tumor. Well, what the hell does that mean? Look, lady, the attending physician said that she's... Comatose. Due to a possible brain tumor. You see, that's how it kills. I mean, that's how it would look. That's how what kills, how what looks. Let me start from the beginning. When I got out of college, I had an opportunity to work for a Dr. Amberdeen. I had majored in biology, specifically genetics. Dr. Amberdeen was working in genetic engineering. He was at work in secret on designing a new life form. Well, this is real fascinating, but what does it have to do with Jennifer? Getting to that. Look, do you want to hear this or don't you? Ted, no, not really. Ted, shut up. Would you go on, lady? We're sorry. Well, he actually succeeded in designing a totally new life form. I mean, something that has never existed before. Resilient, intelligent, and I think very deadly. He told me once that if it ever grew up, it would probably be very dangerous. Yeah, well, I take it it never grew up, huh? Well, I don't know. You see, Ed... I mean, Dr. Amberdeen had a heart attack and died. I know he planned on killing it before it got too big, but he didn't get a chance. He was working alone when he died, and the creature escaped. We all assumed that it had crawled away somewhere and died. So what makes you think different now? The murders. It feeds on spinal fluid. It draws out of its victim with a needle-like tongue. Yeah, but we never had any murders like that. 
Yes, but most people wouldn't be looking for it because its victims would look like they had an epileptic fit or a brain tumor. Why didn't you come forward with this sooner? I wasn't sure. Well, have you seen this thing? Do you know what it looks like? No. I mean, I snuck in once, but it was only in its embryonic stage then. Ted, is it possible? At least check into it. What have you got to lose, please, if this thing grows up? Lou, she's right. Let's check it out. Look, I want you to go talk to the coroner and find out if they overlooked anything. I mean, anything. Okay, I'll give you a call. In the meantime, get her a name and phone number. Okay, I want to see if I can, uh, if I can find a center point to these attacks. If this thing is real, how are we going to kill it? I don't know. I, I only came in on the end of the experiment. Well, you said uh, the doctor Amber Amberdeen. Dean. He was planning on killing it. It's true. There's some experiment notes. Now they might tell us something. You still got. The originals were taken by the people who were financing the project, but I made some copies for myself. I'll go back and get them if you want. Do that. Go get them. Okay. Oh, and look, uh, I'm sorry about what happened uh, earlier. Oh, I'll be back soon. I'm just going to go down to the lab. Hi, Lou. I've been doing some checking, and that girl of yours is right on the money. There's been an unusually high incident of brain tumor and epileptic deaths. Are you sure? The coroner also said that, uh... A lot of the death victims had a, a tremendous loss of spinal fluid. Listen, I'm beginning to think that the girl is right, and if she is... That means that there have been a lot more deaths than have been reported. Yeah, I'll tell you, there's something I don't understand. Is how the hell something like this creature could get around town without being seen. I mean, uh... Nobody's reported anything strange. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's one of the parts of the puzzle that doesn't fit. I'm afraid I got another one for you. Okay, what? The case has been closed. What? I got a bulletin the other day which reads, The suspect was cornered and was killed during a subsequent gun battle with police. Where? What division? Well, it didn't say. I tried to get more information, but the bigwigs upstairs put a gag order on it. They are trying to cover something up. You don't know that. You know something else? They're going to stop looking. Look, Ted, this isn't getting us anywhere. Now, I cannot be involved in this thing officially anymore. The case is closed. Damn it! Ted, hey, take it easy. It doesn't mean that I'm giving up. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over to your office after I borrow a few things here, and we'll see if we can figure it out, okay? Ted? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh... Look, I'm sorry, Lou. I just got a little excited. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Right. Oh, Christ, that's where the lab is.
7.21 p.m. It's been 512 hours since birth. The Singenor is growing at an astounding rate. The vertebrae heat exchange system is functioning at maximum, drawing the warm air in and expelling cold air out into its surroundings. The organism is able to maintain the high body temperatures needed for its internal chemistry. Still small at this point, I'm unable to determine what proportions the being might attain when fully grown. The question, I'm afraid, will have to remain unanswered as the Singenor already exhibits extremely aggressive behavior. Its diet being what it is, spinal fluid, along with what seems an almost diabolical cunning, could make this creature extremely dangerous if I were to allow it to reach maturity. 10.42. Singenor is becoming increasingly difficult to manage. When it's not pounding or chewing on its container, it just sits there staring at me, its silvery eyes almost glowing, burning into me. I have to admit it's a little unnerving. I will have to put an end to the Singenor soon. I can't allow it to get any larger. This stuff, you know. No. Looks like a maintenance worker, a construction worker. 
about anybody seeing it. Ted, there's something I found out. Something in the notes. I think the thing is getting ready to reproduce. How is that possible? I thought there was only one of these things. Yes, but it doesn't need a mate to reproduce. Not all organisms do. What are you going to do? Don't you think you ought to call for help or something? At least call the police? By the time they get here, it's going to be too late. You should go home and stay there, okay? You're right, I should. I should. But I'm not going to! What are you doing? I'm going with no, you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Besides, you need me. Oh, I do. Sure. I'm the only one that knows all about this thing. It's called the Singenor. It stands for Synthesized Genetic Organism. Cherry, this is not a game. We are dealing with a killing machine. Now, I'm not going to risk your life by taking you with me. Do you think I'd be any safer up here? No, but you'd be safer at home. If you go down there, I am not going home. I am going to wait for you right here. planning on doing when you come face to face with those people? Ventilating it a little. Oh. You know, I don't think I like the way you said, oh. Um, how, how big is this thing by now? I'm not sure. What does it look like? I don't know. I thought you said you knew all about this thing.
these people. That 
That's it, the sewer. Ed, I want you to get on the radio and get somebody out here who has a map of this storm system. Right now. Okay. Jerry, I've been here before. This is Lee Thornburg's metalworks. It's in here. Let's go. Go, go. Listen to me. Listen very carefully. Then this thing can wait us out. We don't stand a chance unless we do something. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get him. I'm going to try to lure him over the bed on the bed of this drop forge. And if I can do that, if I can get him there, I want you to operate this machine. I can't operate this thing! Shut up! Yes, you can. Now listen to me. 
You've got to hit both of these buttons at the same time, otherwise it won't operate. Okay. You put your foot on that. That's a safety. If your foot is not on there, it will not operate. Do you understand? You have to hit both buttons at the same time, otherwise it will, won't operate. Oh! <laughs>